is good for the metta meditation at the end because it means that whatever metta we have will be more powerful as well. And I was just reflecting as I was sitting here as well. We had the question before, you know, do you practice one or do you practice the other or do you combine them all together? And to be honest, the way that I guide um, the meditation that we'll be doing together, especially the first three, probably, um, would be in there to some extent. As I said before, I find it quite difficult to separate out kindness and care sometimes, especially the first two. But uh, let's see how we go, and then you can maybe make a judgment yourself. I would feel if it was a pure mental meditation in that sense, or it was a mental medita meditation which is infused with all these um, beautiful qualities that we have been talking about that we can grow and cultivate in our own hearts. Okay. As usual, um, it's great if we can find a way to sit comfortably and sit in a relaxed way, especially for the mental meditation, it's uh, really good because that can help the process. And then we can allow our eyes to close gently if they're not already closed. And allow our bodies to settle and to relax first of all. which will help us to go inside and work or be with the mind and not be distracted by the body or sensations that might be happening in the body. And one way of relaxing the body that I like to do is imagining that I'm taking a shower, a slow motion shower, and the water of that shower is like the awareness, and the warmth of that water is like the kindness, it's like the care and allow it to flow over my body slowly and steadily. It's one of those ways to allow your mind to connect with the body, to feel what's going on in the body, and to relax the body. So starting at the top of the head, See if you can feel the imaginary water touching your skull and flowing over your skull and your hair. Relaxing it, warming it. Allowing it to flow over your forehead, your eyebrows, your eyes, your nose and your cheeks, your mouth and your chin.
allow it to touch your whole face, to warm and relax your whole face. To see inside into the muscles, into the bone. Also relaxing the eye sockets, tongue in your mouth your jaw, making sure it's loose and relaxed, at ease, allow the water to flow over the sides of your head, left and right. ears, all the way down to the neck, where it starts, and then also the back of your head, lying down the back of your head. Being aware and allowing the kindness and the warmth to touch your skin, to soak into the muscles, soak into the bone. And then even Soaking right into your skull, to your brain. Allowing that to deeply relax. Feel the water flowing down your neck, from the back, the sides, relaxing it, warming it. Allowing the kindness and the care to seep in. into the muscles, into the bone, the upper part of your spine, your neck. Hopefully you can feel this area relaxing and settling. As you go down your body, allow each area to adjust. If it needs to be moved, please allow it to move so it gets just in the right position. And then we move into our shoulders. circle slowly moving downwards. Warming that area with 
kindness and care. Relaxing it. to your elbows, letting them be soaked in awareness and kindness. Then moving into your lower arms, having the water move downwards, all around. Towards your wrists. Hold your wrists into your hands, to the palms, to the backs, into the fingers, from the base, all the way to the tips. And if your hands or your arms are in the wrong place, please feel free to shift them in a different position. To allow them to relax. And maybe feel your whole arms and hands now. And make sure that no part is untouched by the kindness and the care of the water. Relaxing the muscles, the tendons, the bones. And then moving to our chest. See if you can feel the water move down the front, move down the sides, and move down the back simultaneously, making its way downwards over your chest. in this area with kindness and care. Maybe we're in the middle of the back by now, and the belly and the sides. Moving downwards to your lower back. into your belly, into your hips, allowing the whole torso to rest So here, feel that no part of your torso has been left out, has been untouched by this kind and caring water. Relaxing the muscles, the tendons, and the bone. chest, bones, 
and the spine. All the way down to your ribs. Let it seep into you so that all the organs are also warmed and touched. The lungs, the heart, the whole circulation system, the whole digestive tract, your stomach, your bowels, And whatever else is involved in digesting food. Taking in nutrients and getting rid of waste. So hopefully that whole area is relaxed from the outside in and from the inside out. And then we can move into our legs. Starting at the hip joint, right leg, right leg and left leg. Moving down, all around. Touching the skin, soaking the skin with kindness and care. Let the warmth and the kindness receive it. 
to the muscles, into the bones. And then feeling your entire legs, left and right. Feeling that the warmth is flowing into them from the outside in, but also from the inside out. Feeling the body as a whole, hopefully relaxed now, softened by kindness and care. And then I invite you to let your heart <coughs> resonate with this beautiful quality of metta. Of kindness. Of friendship. Of unconditional love. respect and of deeply caring and as you feel that in your own heart you actually feel deeply cared for yourself You feel accepted. You feel that you belong. You feel at ease. Because you don't have to live up to many expectations. You are okay as you are. Metta is just this pure wish that we might be well, we may be safe, we may be protected. See if that resonates in your heart. Then you can get a feeling of what Metta and Karuna caring are actually like. How they feel inside. Give those qualities a home in your heart. Give them space. Open up to them and invite them in. As you 
kindle this beautiful feeling in your heart. There comes a point where you just can't contain it. And it starts to overflow. It starts to overflow into your body. And if there are any tensions or problems left, it melts them away. Sending out meta and receiving meta from everyone else as well. And then allowing this energy to flow out even further. The energy of the whole group spreading Metta and Karuna outwards into the world, wishing all beings well, wishing that they may be free from suffering and danger. specifically you think of some of the people who support this center, who come and help with retreats such as this, cleaning the place, maintaining the place, bringing food. We share this beautiful quality of metal with them. share the practice we've done together, the peace and the calm that we have developed with them, like a gift. And then we allow this beautiful quality to just radiate out. And 
radiate out in all directions as far as the strength of our hearts can reach upwards and downwards and all around into the whole country into the surrounding countries out into the world out into the universe tap into our hearts once more and now we can choose one specific person that is suffering that we wish to send some matter towards sending matter sharing merits Let this beautiful energy flow to them. Maybe you can even see them receiving it. See them having a smile on their face. Especially think of Chi Lei Hu was in hospital and people who would have come to this retreat but couldn't. So we share beautiful energy of meta, we share the merits of this retreat with her especially. And instead of ringing the bell to come out of meditation, I will be doing the chant on universal well-being once more. Please just listen and see if you can you know, radiate these qualities out into the world while I'm reciting it. Yeah. 
themselves. May all beings be released from all suffering, and may they not be parted from the good fortune they have attained. When they act upon intention, all beings are the owners of their action, and in its results. Their future is born from such action, companion to such action, and its results will be their home. All action with intention, be they skillful or harmful of such acts, they will be the heirs. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So please feel free to <coughs> open your eyes and slowly come out of meditation. So a whole day of practice, how nice of you to spend your holiday like this, meditating together, and hearing the Dharma together, cultivating beautiful mind states, beautiful mind states of metta, karuna, mudita, and upeka. Um, I guess <laughs> that would be pretty much it. I was um, asked to just uh, mention a few things at the end here. So, flowing to freedom, a joyous ride to awakening. You might have seen the little booklet downstairs already. It's a new booklet that was put together by the teachings of Ajahn Brahmali, who will be here soon. So, if you wish to give a donation and get one of those booklets, feel free to do so. Um, I think Ajahn Brahmali will say more about this when he's here as well. But um, as monastics, we just come and offer our teachings freely. But if people wish to give something, then of course we encourage giving. And this specific one is a book that you can take home with you and read and reflect. But it's also um, a donation that goes towards Sati Monastery over in Australia. So our nuns over in Western Australia, they have Damasara Nuns Monastery, and that is growing and developing really well. It's a place for bhikkhunis to train, and they are running out of space. <laughs> so many monasteries over in the BSWA are because there are good teachers and there is good training that is on offer. So people, local people and people from overseas come to train. So um, the monks monastery is overflowing in branch into branch monasteries and the nuns monastery has overflowed into a uh, branch monastery in Sydney um, or outside of, uh, outside of Sydney actually. It's between Sydney and Canberra and that is Sati Forest Monastery. And because it is a bit far away, as a forest monastery should be, so the monastics and the lay people can practice there in peace in a secluded place, they recently were looking into getting a place which is closer to town, where they can go for the weekend, where they can go to give some teachings, where it's easier for people to pick them up and bring them to the venues, bring them back or um, do some you know, medical appointments and things like that. It just makes everything easier. So if I understand correctly, the donations that will be given for this booklet, they will be used um, for that place. I think they've already purchased the place, isn't it? Yes. But they're still raising the funds to um, pay it off. So that's one thing to mention. And I think the other one was you wanted to take a picture, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> because I kind of have a nice thing together. OK. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know. Does that cover it, or you wanted to say something? Not much. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was actually like sharing the merits in the mental meditation. So um, please, uh, let's um, do that. <coughs> so it's okay to do some things formally, but um, it is really the intention and the thought that counts. And I have mentioned that before. So I hope you could actually share the merits, especially with Chi uh, Lai Hu, and then with that one person you were thinking of but also with all beings far and wide sending this beautiful and meta energy out into the world. So I hope that is okay like this. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for coming and practicing together. So always remember that the, the practice is always something that's very profound. So when the world, there's a lot of darkness, as I was saying, always develop a light, a light of um, loving kindness, compassion, karuna, and, and metito in one's heart, and radiate it out. So when there's darkness in the world, we should always, it's not complaining, light, the light of wisdom in one's heart and allow that to grow because without Dharma then the world can be very dark and unfriendly but we, if we develop um, the practice in our heart then we can bring that happiness inside us and share with, with our friends and family and outwards so that's all I can say and um, I mean this trip back here was mainly not really too much plan involved. My mom they asked me to come back and visit my grandmother. La. That is uh, 84, so I haven't seen her for like close to 10 years. And also some of the supporters here asked me to come and visit too. And yeah, I thought it's the right time. Eh? So um, so I asked my friend, Venerable Bodhidharma, la. it's my Dharma <coughs> brother, la, to also come out and check out the Dharma scene. La. So if you're wondering well, how come there's two monks here, la? it's because I asked Venerable to come over la? and just check out the Dharma scene here. La? And also to meet our regular supporter, la? they come to um, Jana Grove and Bodhiyana quite often, la? like, um, like Dolly and also like Chiwe over there. Okay, thank you. <laughs>